a palpable psychological echo of the human standardization of the world around us manifests itself in the form of boredom generated by the monotonous repetition of our organization. The complexity of nature, however, is not only in the complicated composition of its elements, but in the incomprehensible growth, not uh, amenable to the analysis of human organization. The etymology of the word nature, originating from the Greek word physis, and also reflected in Slavic word priroda, and so on, testifies to this circumstance. It is, by the way, significant for the development of thinking in the Western world that the meaning of the word physics, once again physica, is derived from the verb to grow, fuo in Greece. Correspondingly, physics dealt from the beginning with nature, that is physis, and that was about organic activity, not mechanical processes. Something is simple when it is <laughs> monotonous, and monotonium is the normal state of an organizing person. The human organizer contracts ready-made, that is, elementary units, while nature sprouts, or as the Russian modern philosopher Vladimir Bibikin characterized this matter. Nature creates and reproduces itself, tangled under one's feet, while we are we are only capable of dead imitation. Hence, nature knows no transient process. Nature sprouts through the, through the intransitive development of subject and object in one person. Further, nature unfolds by internal force, while our artifacts are, as a result of organization, drawn up according to an external plan. Already Aristotle draw attention to this circumstance. The science of the natural philosopher deals with the things that have in themselves a principle of movement. So isn't the insurmountable obstacle for science to create life based on this fundamental difference between internal self-movement, as reflected in the organism, and on the other hand on external composition reflected in our human organization. Indeed, science can destroy our entire planet, but it is not able to create the simplest microorganism. Likewise, the aspect of fertile development in a masterpiece of art is missing, as noticed by the English mathematician and philosopher Alfred Whitehead. Art takes care of the immediate fruition here and now, and in doing so, is apt to lose some depth by reason on the immediate fruition at which it is aiming. Its business is to render the day of judgment a success already now. The word nature is used in this case in a broad sense, including not only the sphere of phenomena included in the scientific field called bio biology, but any natural phenomena around us, such as, for example, mountains, rivers, lakes, clouds, and so on, which also germinate, although not by cell division, as in the kingdom of animals and plants. In other words, by Nietzsche, the world regarded as a self-generating work of art.